Good afternoon, everyone. At this hearing, I am opening hearing number 15 of the 185th period of session of the Commission, which is entitled Implementation of Precautionary Measures of Defenders, which was requested by the Centro de Justicia y Derecho Internacional, CEGIL, the um, Attorneys Collective, Jose Alvear Restrepo Cajar, the Comité de Solidaridad con los Presos Políticos, CSPP, the uh, Comisión Colombiana de Juristas, CCJ, la, the Comisión Interesclesial de Justicia y Paz, the Corporación Instituto Internacional sobre Raza, Igualdad y Derechos Humanos, the Corporación Reiniciar, and the Corporación Sisma Mujer. My name is Estuardo Ralón. I am the first vice president of the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights. I am joined by Commissioner Joel Hernandez, Rapporteur for Colombia, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena de Tortino, and Commissioner Roberta Clark. We are have also the Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca, the Special Rapporteur for ESER Rights, Soledad García Muñoz, and the team of the Executive Secretariat. I would like to greet the representatives of the state, the representatives of the civil society, and the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights uh, from the UN for Central America and the Caribbean. I would also like to explain how we have allotted time for this hearing. We will begin with the civil society. They will speak for 20 minutes. After that, we will listen to the state for another 20 minutes. After that, the UN expert will speak for seven minutes. I would like to welcome her. After that, the commission will speak for 20 minutes, and then we will listen to the final comments for 10 minutes from the civil society and the state, and finally, we will close the hearing. So I would like to thank you all for being here. And without further ado, I would like to give the floor to the civil society for 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. Good afternoon, commissioners, and also the special rapporteurs and the entire team. We would like to also greet the representatives of uh, the UN and the Colombian state. My name is Sebastián Saavedra. I am part of the uh, Comisión Juliana de um, Colombiana de Juristas, and along with member with other organizations of the civil society, we appreciate the fact that we can be here to discuss uh, challenges in the implementation of precautionary measures for defenders in Colombia. As it is known, Colombia is one of the most dangerous um, countries for uh, human right defenders. And the situation became worse after the peace agreements of 2016. The role of the commission has been priceless in activating the, their precautionary measures. So far, about 20 precautionary measures were granted for uh, human rights defenders in Colombia. And in spite that protection for years, institutions of the Colombian state have failed to implement these precautionary measures. So there isn't an adequate space for us to uh, exert our right to defend our rights. And unfortunately, all these hurdles have been quite usual. So we would like to address them with the commission and the state among the most relevant ones. First, we have identified the persistence of um, approach that is based on physical security, which is not enough. Secondly, the um, lack of a differentiated approach and thirdly, a lack of coordinated uh, institutional approach. We think that this could be improved with specific measures. So apart from uh, showing the challenges, we will present a series of proposals. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Angelica Ricaude. I am an attorney from Instituto Nacional sobre Raza, Igualdad y Derechos Humanos. I will discuss the issue with regards to the uh, reactive um, response 
even though we realize that the um, material measures of protection are relevant, the state shouldn't only focus on physical security and reacting to risk by implementing, and it should actually implement proactive uh, proposals be, uh, trying to uh, defend rights with a differentiated approach. Also, when implementing these specific measures, there are several hurdles. First of all, when precautionary measures are granted and notified to the state, an internal proceeding uh, is established to examine the risk that was already checked by the the commission without uh, the state adopting actual measures um, ordered by the commission. Apart from that, the beneficiaries usually have a passive role, which is restricted to being interviewed by, an, uh, by analysts, but they are not able to um, express their opinion about the measures. Secondly, in spite of the agreements, many of these analysts have passed or present links to public forces or uh, organizations of intelligence of the state, and that is not reported. The same thing occurs with individuals who are part of the escorts who are supposed to protect beneficiaries, even though beneficiaries have faced risks and um, human rights violations by that force of the state. And with regards to the element materials of these structures, many a time the elements are inadequate or in bad state. For example, um, bulletproof uh, vests are uh, damaged or cannot be adapted to the body of the person, uh, phone numbers that are that don't work, panic buttons that don't work, uh, the, the gas price is not pays, paid by the state, so beneficiaries have to pay for that. And even they are given GPS uh, devices that record their location. Also, uh, private companies are hired for this because they execute their contracts without considering a differentiated approach or the particular needs of the beneficiaries. Finally, within the framework of the implementation of precautionary measures, the Ministry of Foreign Relations that is in charge of coordinating state actions, uh, trying to uh, comply with the orders, doesn't really do its job because they are just, they only, um, convey information or try to create spaces for dialogue, but there's no follow-up work or there isn't, uh, they don't try to uh, implement measures in accordance with the beneficiaries. And all of these hurdles have led to the partial or total lifting of structures under the premise of a so-called diminution of the risk. As a consequence, since no other protection measures are adopted, there is a de facto unilateral lifting by the state of the measures granted by the commission, which endangers the lives and physical integrity of human rights defenders, thus forcing them and their representatives to present new, to file new um, uh, remedies and also facing newer risks. Hi, hi my name is Carolina Solano, and I will talk about uh, the differentiated approach and, uh, the, and the facts we see around impunity. One of the main difficulties we have identified in the civil society is the lack of an implementation of a differentiated approach in terms of gender and ethnicity when implementing the uh, measures. In the case of uh, Black communities, many a time the uh, protection measures do not have a holistic approach that consider the cosmovision of Afro-Colombian groups and their relationship to their territories. Among the main difficulties, we see that the group of escorts is not made up of individuals who inhabit in the same territory as the beneficiaries. So it is difficult for them to understand their particular needs. Also, in many cases, the um, protective agenda does not include family members. So uh, they 
forget to understand the um, meaning of community leaderships for these communities. When, it ta when we're talking about indigenous peoples, they uh, fail to acknowledge the cons them and the context in which they work. Also, there's concern about the deep funding of the protection measures, and there are no mechanisms aimed at uh, strengthening their own um, their own protection measurements as a self-government, for example. Also, there's no prior consultation with these cons with these communities. The same situation is faced by women and LGBTI persons. Now, because these uh, the protection is not given to their families, there is no differentiated approach as suggested by the commission that is not taken into account when implementing the measures. So even though there is a specific instance of women, we have identified that um, no women are, no, sorry, no measures are recommended with a gender approach. And in the case of precautionary measures for indigenous and black women, the um, measures don't usually use a racial or ethnic approach. And the same occurs with women who live in rural areas because measures do not take into account their social and political context. Also, they don't take into account um, forced displacement and other gender-based forms of violence, such as measures related to their mental, emotional, and physical health. And the risk situation faced by women are increased by the stigmatization of the beneficiaries of precautionary members, uh, sorry, um, precautionary beneficiaries and their families, which um, repeat patriarchal and misogynistic practices. And impunity is um, a risk for human rights defenders in Colombia. A lack of uh, coherence between the uh, numbers presented by the public prosecutor and the ones recorded by NGOs show us that uh, the victims remain in a limbo. For example, the public prosecution investigates uh, assuming that the victims self-threat themselves, or they say that the um, perpetrators are family members of the victims, and their only objective is to give a, uh, an answer to the media. Many a time, their um, responses are segmented because they forget the recurrence of threats. When we're talking about people who receive threats for five years, for example, e and even though there are um, guidelines that are very specific, they only focus on material uh, perpetrators without thinking of intellectual authors. Also, there's a low activity of other control organizations that should be there to ensure the rights of human rights defenders. Thank you, Carolina. My name is Paula Casero. Based on what was previously said by the other organizations here, we would like to present the state six recommendations for the implementation of precautionary measures for human rights defenders. Our first recommendation is that the Colombian state should try to finally have a protocol for uh, the actions of the government in terms of precautionary measures. We believe that it is necessary for this protocol to have at least the uh, determination of the authorities' uh, compliance with precautionary measures. Secondly, a regular regime for follow-up work. There should be uh, spaces uh, that uh, it control this. Thirdly, uh, territorial follow-up spaces that uh, look at the measures that were agreed upon with uh, the communities. They should have a differentiated approach. Fourth, the adoption of a leadership role in the uh, Ministry of Foreign Relations, which should articulate institutions and follow up the uh, measures. They shouldn't 
just foster the beginning of the actions. They should check the quality and relevance of the measures. Fifth, a full integration of uh, ethnic, gender, and territorial approach. This should be done at each stage of the implementation and should uh, imply the participation of uh, officials who have trained in this approach and who follow the protocols determined. Sixth, establishing a follow-up mechanism for the investigations of the facts that led to the granting of these precautionary measures. These investigations should be done following the standards of the Inter-American System of Human Rights. Our second recommendation is that the state should understand the dimension of precautionary measures, fostering the participation of the public prosecutor's office and the creation of new offices and uh, the participation of the um, integral uh, program for women leaders, for example, as well as other programs that work with the beneficiaries. Third recommendation, in the implementation of the measures at a domestic level, this should not reanalyze uh, the risk that was already established by the Commission. It should act understanding that there is an extraordinary risk and implement the uh, measures as swiftly as possible. Fourth, there shouldn't be a presupposition of ordinary risk and the measures should not be modified unilaterally by the state. Fifth, the uh, protection structures assigned to the beneficiaries um, should include the opinion of the beneficiary. The beneficiary should receive the resume of those who will be in charge of uh, protecting them. And finally, the state should um, try to identify, um, sorry, should issue specific reports on its investigations and they should try it should try to identify patterns and modus operandi in uh, whatever um uh, attacks or risks there may be entailed thank you very much this is it thank you uh, for us thank you very much thank you i would like to thank the civil society for their presentation and now we will move on to the state for up to 20 minutes. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Colombian state, I would like to cordially greet the honorable members of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and the um, organizations that requested this hearing. I would like to express the state's commitment before the Inter-American Commission to effectively implement the precautionary measures granted in favor of human rights defenders in our country so they can do their valuable work in the defense of the Colombian democracy. The responsibility of the state is working on the base of solid and articulated institutions so as to ensure the life and the integrity of the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures granted by the commission. That is why the national government led, led by Mr. Petro uh, has created a roadmap built on the, um, on the dialogue with civil society organizations trying to bring about uh, transformations that are necessary for the Colombian society, and that will strengthen the implementation of these measures with a differentiated approach. And as a proof of this radical change, and I would aspire for these organizations to acknowledge that, is uh, the priority that is given by the uh, government to the uh, international instruments of human rights that are vindicated by these civil society organizations for decades. Of course, the Ministry of Foreign Relations as a liaison and between the uh, Inter-American Convention and the 
state institutions that are in charge of uh, implementing the measures articulates them. And that will allow the deployment of actions that aim at ensuring the protection of the beneficiaries of the measures and will also investigate the facts that led to the uh, issuance of those measures. Colombia currently has 195 requests of information on precautionary measures, 99 precaution, uh, precautionary measures, and 37 are in favor of persons and institutions who are human rights defenders in Colombia. The state continues to work for uh, meetings uh, on the ground to bring about dialogue spaces between beneficiaries, pen um, petitioners, and institutions trying to articulate the implementation of precautionary measures. Honorable commissioners, civil society representatives, within the framework of the implementation of the precautionary measures, the state of Colombia during 2022 has prepared 114 state reports for the commission, 100 interinstitutional meetings and 60 one meetings for follow-up and implementation. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has implemented as a strategy the creation of workshops with legal support for the different state institutions to strengthen the interinstitutional articulation. Taking this scenario into account, in 2022, there have been 24 workshops aimed at institutions at the regional and central level, three workshops for UNP officials and four for uh, officials, state officials. That reinforces the commitment of the state for the implementation of the precautionary measures with the aim of guaranteeing the life integrity of the beneficiaries in the exercise of their work, which is vital for the country. The government is aware there are challenges and obstacles and different strategies have been developed in that regard. And we are open to have dialogue spaces as the organizations have requested. In fact, the changes that are taking place are a historical opportunity in order to address jointly pending issues. This time, hand in hand with the civil society, in particular with the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures. In that regard, the state of Colombia highlights its commitment in order to develop the necessary measures for the comprehensive implementation of measures granted, taking into account that their execution involves established procedures under the principle of complementarity of the system. That's why we have strengthened the process established to assess the risk of the beneficiaries when determining the measures for their protections as the national unit of protection will explain. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs will conduct meeting with risk assessment officials in order to inform them the peculiarities of each precautionary measures, such as what occur in the context in which the measures were granted and other recommendations made by the commission. Together with the National Protection Unit, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs participates in the sessions of the Committee for Risk Evaluation and Recommendation of Measures, CEREM, when it comes to implementing protective measures. The state of Colombia wants to highlight its commitment to implement efficiently the precautionary measures granted to defenders in the country. And as it has been mentioned before, 
we want to work together with civil society organizations to develop strategies in the same way we want to say once again that the state is ready to open dialogue spaces in order to establish measures to protect the life and integrity of the beneficiaries of these measures. In order to conclude, I would like to inform that the Colombian state is going to take down notes of what is being said by the petitionary organizations and is going to present a proposal to the commission in order to improve their processes for the implementation of precautionary measures granted to human rights defenders. The organizations are right when they say that justice in Colombia, what they have said in the conclusion, justice is for those who needed the least. And organizations could say that those that had access to the UNMP were the ones that needed it the least. But this has changed honorable commission and we are going to show the commitment and the radical change we have made in that regard i will now give the floor to the director of the ump and afterwards the specialized director of uh, human rights violations of the attorney general's office thank you i would like to greet the members commissioners of the Inter-American Commission and the requesting organizations. I am the director of the UNP. And I have to say that this unit has been designated as one of the security institutions that are part of the program in order to protect the lives of the persons. And it's part of the 2022-2026 program. We have the aim of preventing uh, in order to protect the right to life, liberty, integrity, and security of persons, groups, and communities that may be in a situation of risk, extraordinary or extreme as a direct or indirect consequence of the exercise of their activities or their social, political, humanitarian activities, or due to the exercise of their position with a differentiated approach with a territorial, ethnical, and gender character that guarantees the respect for human rights. It is our duty to inform the Honorable Commission that law 418 of 1997 and decree 1066 are the legal framework of competence of the unit that makes the unit to comply with legal requirements before granting precautionary protection measures that include three main budgets, three main elements. The a requesting person has to belong to the community, to a particular community. Second, the existence of a situation of risk taking into account the parameters established of a sentence 719 of the Constitutional Court and the decree of 2015. Third, the proof of uh, potential relation between the risk and the uh, requesting person or community. This, if complied with this, the protection program is implemented. Taking into account what has been said, the UNP as a security body 
at a national level is in charge of developing strategies for the analysis and assessment of the risks, threats and vulnerabilities that may allow for the implementation of measures for individual or collective uh, protection of the communities that are part of the program with a differentiated approach respecting the principle of consent, which implies that prior to granting a protection measure, the person or collective that is interested has to present a request expressing their will. In this legal framework, the UNP is one of the bodies in charge of implementing the precautionary measures granted by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Thus, the fulfillment of such recommendations have been developed together with concrete actions to improve the response to the recommendations that have been made regarding the implementation of precautionary measures granted to human rights defenders and organizations in Colombia. Once the Ministry of Foreign Affairs receives this information for the implementation of precautionary measures granted by the Commission, there's direct participation of the interested party and other uh, state bodies with competence, the UNP then as soon as possible activates the path to analysis to analyze the risk and makes recommendations that are considered by the Committee for Risk Evaluation and Recommendations of Measures, CEREM, which is a body made up by different national entities that decide what are the protection measures and complementary measures that are adequate and must be implemented. Among the different measures that the CRM may determine, we can mention armored vehicles, conventional vehicles, fuel protection guards, vests, self-defense uh, courses, national international flight tickets air or water transit support means of communication security technical systems and the specific actions before the implementation of measures we can inform the following the unp within the framework of the precautionary measures granted by the commission since 2020 to the first semester of 2022 has participated in 320 meetings, follow-up and implementation meetings with the participation of petitioners and beneficiaries, inter-institutional meetings, bilateral meetings with the participation of petitioners and beneficiaries internal meetings. The UNP in 2021 and in 2022 has implemented different orders which are, are being evaluated and also different risk assessments are being uh, developed at the moment. The UNP in favor of the persons that are part of the following organizations includes Corporación Colectiva de Abogados, Comité de Solidaridad de Presos Políticos, three members of these organizations have precautionary measures. The Instituto Nacional sobre la Raza, Igualdad y Derechos Humanos, one of their members has protectionary measures, precautionary measures. In that regard, in order to deal with the 
concern of the organizations, we have implemented different measures in order to improve the results. And we are going to implement a plan that uses a database that analyzes the efficiency of the responses of the individual risk assessment in order to control that the UMP, the audio is not very good. The program is based on intercultural dialogue strategies that allows the a differentiated approach in order to guarantee the protection of the persons and social leaders that are being attacked or threatened, overcome vulnerabilities and improve their capacities so that there are no risks for them. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners, representatives of the organizations and participants of this hearing. First of all, I would like to express that the Attorney General Office has created a specific strategy for the investigation of crimes against human rights defender made up by different lines of actions that were presented before the Inter-American Commission in a public hearing in March 2017. Within the framework of the implementation of the strategy, the Attorney General's Office implemented a order in, in order to carry out strategies and uh, to investigate um, crimes of um, homicide and threats against human rights defenders. One of the main lines of actions was to move forward and strengthen the investigations of threats against defenders. It is timely to mention that the, in April 2021, we have implemented measures to strengthen the national group for the investigation of threats against human rights defenders, a strategy that is being carried out by a national secretariat for the investigation of human rights violations. As part of the strategy that was implemented, the main tasks are the following. To establish path of prioritization, articulate actions with the different um, sections of the institution in order to investigate the threats to human rights defenders. At the same time, we have implemented a line of attention to the leaders and um, defenders that are being threatened in order to move forward with urgent actions and search open source databases so that the evidence could not be lost and we can move forward with investigation. Sorry to interrupt you, but we you don't have more time. You will have 10 more minutes at the end, and then you will be able to complete your presentation. Now we will continue with the next part, which is to give the floor to the EUN representative for seven minutes. Thank you, Commissioner, Mr. Vice President. I'd like to greet the commissioners, the authorities of the Colombian state, the representatives of the civil society and other participants in this hearing. I would like to thank the Inter-American Commission for the invitation in order to make this presentation. I am Monserrat Solano Carboni, and my participation in this public hearing is as um, Assistant uh, Secretary of the High Commissioner of the UN for Human Rights. I'm here to provide information in uh, orally with and I'm not under oath and my comments should not be understood as a waiver of the privileges and immunities of the UN and and I would like to pay homage to the human rights defenders in Colombia who every day risk their lives in order to protect their persons and communities in a situation of vulnerability to protect their land water the environment and culture for those who 
fight for the promotion of women's rights and the LGBTQ plus uh, population, ethnical groups, and many, many more. This community of defenders is one of the most important elements of Colombia. In the risk for human rights defenders in Colombia is very high. My office has received 202 um, attempt, attempts of murder, and they, some of them are being verified. Many of the victims were women. We have also registered threats to another aggressions against defenders by uh, criminal groups and non-state groups. They threaten them through different means such as phones, email, women defenders, these threats have a sexual component or aimed at their relatives. Attacks may even be um, attempts of murder. The seriousness of the threats has made victims to stop their defense activities, abandon their communities and leave the country. Between 2021 and 2022, the office has documented 1,911 threats and attacks. There's a high level of stigmatization of defenders, even by state makers. The attacks to defenders are aimed at weakening the resistance of the communities before armed agents that want to um, control the territories. In many cases, they have threatened traditional um, members, um, members of the indigenous guards and to damage the social fabric. By doing that, they threaten Afro-descendant and indigenous peoples. This year, the there has been an increase against peasant organizations. 61 attempted murders were registered. Before this, we recognized the adoption by the government of an emergency plan proposed by the civil society in order to prevent and protect human rights defenders, social leaders, and in 69 municipalities and three capitals prioritized because of their high levels of violence. The plan includes six exits and different actions in the short and long term. For example, the security measures in order to uh, provide protection and security to human rights defenders. The plan also is aimed at promoting dialogue, improving the early alerts of the ambassador person to um, strengthen the decree for the protection of, uh, for collective, protect, collective protection measures. The plan should also be developed jointly with the civil society. One of the short-term measures that is part of the plan is the adoption of a strategy by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in order to review and guarantee the implementation of collective and individual precautionary measures granted by the inter-American system. The office has followed up different of these measures. And based on this experience, we suggest working on five axes that coincide with the recommendations and made by the civil society. Firstly, to strengthen the active role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the implementation of precautionary measures so that it summons the rest of the institutions regularly to guarantee the fulfillment of the measures with the participation of the beneficiaries throughout the process. Secondly, to deepen the reform of the UNP. There is a process led by the Court of Constitutionality to different um, orders that is an opportunity to review the system of protection of the unit. The strength of the implementation of collective measures, which has been fostered by, by the UNP and is lagging behind the number of requests due to a lack of budget and the lack of absence of um, holistic measures to protect the collective, which should include an intercultural dialogue. 
strengthening of gender and ethical approach in the implementation of the measures and the implementation of the precautionary measures of the commission should be accompanied by a robust strategy by the state in the investigation of threats. The office supports the adoption of a protocol for the um, implementation of precautionary measures for human rights defender. We recommend reviewing the lag in the implementation of these measures. The office is at the disposal to share information about these measures to work together with the commission. I would like to highlight the work carried out by the Commission for the Protection of Human Rights Defenders in Colombia through granting and follow-up of precautionary measures. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Now we will move on to the comments of the Commission for 20 minutes. I will give the floor to Commissioner Hernandez, the Colombia Rapporteur. Thank you, Mr. President. I would now like to extend to greet the civil society organizations attending this hearing, which they requested. Most of them representatives of precautionary measures beneficiaries. I would also like to greet the representatives of the state, starting by Ambassador Vargas, whom I wish uh, to be very successful in his role. I would also like to greet Ms. Montserrat Solano. It's wonderful to listen to you once again and to uh, join forces with the human rights um, commissioner in Colombia to better protect human rights defender in Colombia, defenders in Colombia. I think that the outlook presented by her shows the importance of precautionary measures, but I also think that we have also found agreement with what was said by the uh, civil society organizations, but also the measures being implemented by the new administration in Colombia. Both the ambassador Vargas and the state representatives have shown us their view in which uh, precautionary measures should be adopted in this new stage. As the saying says, it takes two to, to, to tango. And I think we should actually say that it takes three uh, for the precautionary measures to be effective. The beneficiaries, the state, and the Inter-American Commission. And all three part, parties have to do whatever we can within our mandates to ensure the effectiveness of the measures. I would also like to congratulate the civil society organizations for their recommendations they presented to the state. I think they are all very relevant. And in my experience following up precautionary measures in Colombia and general in the commission, but in Colombia in particular, I do believe that each of them are very relevant. And I will, but I would like to focus on a couple of them. Uh, definitely uh, an agreement on the precautionary measures once they have been granted, a, a, an agreement between the beneficiaries and the state is of the essence, that is the starting point. Many a time we have seen that there are uh, precautionary measures where there was never an agreement meeting and the measure will not be uh, efficient it will lose strength and it would make no sense to have that precautionary measure there. Secondly, another thing I believe is very important is taking into account the risk assessment. And here, I think that the Inter-American Commission assesses the uh, requirements and based on the information, that was presented assesses the existing risk and based on that it formulates its recommendations so when uh, the state reaches the implementation state it doesn't make sense to start from scratch there should already be some progress on the issue and of course 
the state can make the measure more specific. And this takes me to my third recommendation, especially with a differentiated approach. We have also learned throughout the past few years how important it is to uh, use differentiated approaches, in particular in the case of Colombia, where we have seen the risk of the situation of many human rights defenders, social leaders, indigenous leaders, where the ethnic or racial factor is fundamental for the accuracy of the measures. And for example, that has to do with the agreement there should be between beneficiaries and the state to determine the better protection agenda, including the selection of the escorts who should be uh, trustworthy for the beneficiaries. So those are the recommendations I would like to stress because I think they are totally relevant. I would also like to appreciate the answer presented by the state and the uh, agreement I have seen in both parties because it is wonderful to see this willingness of the state to reassess its proceedings. I would also like to convey the, um, the uh, willingness of the commission to have more dialogue with the state. There's already, there was a meeting with the uh, between Commissioner Mantilla, our president, and the vice minister in Colombia, Laura Gil. I met virtually with Ambassador Rojas, the human rights director of the Ministry for Foreign Relations, to discuss precautionary measures. And I think that these initial uh, meetings will move on and turn into a more extensive dialogue on the entire human rights agenda with a specific emphasis on precautionary measures. With regards to the commission, uh, we believe that the precautionary measures are very important. There are 99 existing precautionary measures for Colombia. Out of them, 69 of them are in favor of human rights defenders. So 70% of those measures are for human rights defenders. And of course, that um, makes sense if we consider the existing risk, as Ms. Montserrat explained. The commission has already has also been reviewing its own methodology for precautionary measures, specifically after the adoption of Re uh, Regulation 2 2020, where it established a follow-up methodology for uh, precautionary measures. That is how we took on our responsibility to effectively follow up precautionary measures. We have started to uh, take several steps. Unfortunately, the pandemic, it seems like a cliche, right? But it is a fact. After we adopted Resolution 2 2020, the world uh, became uh, shut down and we couldn't work on follow-up as we wanted to back then. But this year, we started to um, do follow-up work on site on March and April, there was technical work done with teams, both in meetings with the state as in meetings with the representatives around the most urgent precautionary measures. I myself was in Bogota in April this year where I had six working meetings for meetings for eight precautionary measures to foster uh, their compliance or their fulfillment. And I would like to uh, stress that this dialogue was agreed upon with the previous administration and it was very fruitful. 
and it was very protective and it gave the commission it meant for the commission um, a driver to continue to work on following up on precautionary measures after listening to the state's representatives the truth is that i feel very excited with this um renewed spirit seeing how important precautionary measures are for them because it is one of the most effective protection measures in the commission it was developed throughout 40 years and today is completely uh, a, a full part of the of international law in terms of human rights so i am very pleased with these hearings and let me um end expressing the commission's willingness to listen to your recommendations and I mean the recommendations from the petitioners and the state so that the commission can improve its work so that we can um, make precautionary measures even more efficient. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. We still have a couple of minutes, so I will now give the floor to Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to uh, greet the representatives of all these organizations here with us that are presenting all of these. The issue of precautionary measures is like the jewel of our crown, right, at the commission. And we are deeply committed to these tools being effective and efficient. Thank you so much for the work you do. The issue of human rights defenders is a type of work that is very special to the heart of the commission because it, it's about our allies in this fight for the defense of human rights and for the promotion of human rights. To the representatives of the Colombian state, I would like to appreciate their being here. I think that Commissioner Hernandez, as a country rapporteur, has presented a very uh, wide outlook, but I still wish to stress something that for the commission what, what what it means for the commission to listen to a state presenting a position and doing so in a manner that shows how they are trying to seek dialogue and articulation so i would like to acknowledge the presentation of my dear friend mr vargas i hope that you will do a wonderful work in this role. I know you will. But hearing these words, because in our hearings, our hearings try to give, to provide a space for us to listen to the parties. And when the state participates, and does so with this um, willingness to listen to the civil society and to exchange opinions, I think new doors are opened. And I think that Ambassador Vargas was pointing out the importance of this new management, of this new administration for a change in the actions and everything that is necessary to make precautionary measures more effective. And I think that is extremely valuable, especially considering what Commissioner Hernandez said, and I agree with them, with him fully, this list of proposals presented by the civil society that 
could be part of an emergency plan because there are guidelines here there is a there are guiding principles here for the work that can be done to get what we want which is precautionary measures being effective with this comprehensive approach considering uh, the differences or adjustments needed i only have one question for the state when we talk about that regulationary framework that implies the context that should be taken into account by the protection unit do you believe it would be important to make adjustments so that this strengthens the unit and strengthens the legal answers and the con normative context on which the actions of the unit and all the institutions are based. So that that would be my comment, Commissioner and President of the hearing. And that's my, my question here. And if the state can answer now, that would be great. If not, it can be done so in a written form. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Clark, do you have any questions or comments? Thank you very much, Commissioner Alon, and good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank, join my uh, fellow commissioners and thank the participants here at this hearing for all of the valuable information and also for the very frank dialogue. I, I want to start off by saying that the number of applications for precautionary measures um, received by the Commission and the number of precautionary measures issued by the Commission not only reflects the level of risk uh, that human rights defenders face in Colombia, but I would like to believe with a lot of optimism that these applications also reflect the belief that human rights defenders have in the effectiveness and the responsiveness of the Commission. But we do know that the effectiveness of the, of the Commission's work really very much resides, resides, I'm sorry, in the actions, the follow-up actions taken by the state um, within the national jurisdiction. So I welcome the, uh, the, 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 act, the, the, the words of Ambassador Vargas and his team when, they, when he says that the state of Colombia is committed to effectively implementing the precautionary measures between the state um, participants and representatives and uh, civil society organizations here, I think that there's quite a bit of um, accord or agreement on the challenges of implementing precautionary measures effectively. And these include delay, and I think the delay uh, in part is related to the, um, I, I would say, I suppose the duplication or the re, um, the, the the rethink on the risk assessments which the state does there seems to be some agreement that there's insufficient coordination amongst state agencies in relation to the protection of human rights defenders that there's a lack of specificity sometimes uh, in the in the the framing of uh the precautionary measures what i think has been referred to as the differentiated approach the insufficient differentiated approach especially in regard to uh, women whose the threats include sexual violence, um, indigenous peoples, peoples of different ethnicities, and, and also the need for greater participation of human rights defenders and their organization in um, framing the, the, the scope of protection, but also in a continuous monitoring of the protection. So I want to just ask two questions, um, I think, of the state and civil society. One uh, related to the role of beneficiaries and human rights defender organizations. What role do they play, not only in the initial risk assessment done at, 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 at country level, but also are they engaged in periodic reassessments? Um, so that's one question. Um, and if they're not, I guess I would want to ask the state, uh, why not? And the second question I have is on the, the database. Um, is there a database in which all risk events related to human rights defenders are recorded? And having asked that question, I also really want to acknowledge 
the um, the report of the uh, representative of the High Commission for Human Rights who did give us uh, some data here. But for, for the state, I want to ask, is there a database on, which updates the risk faced by human rights defenders and also disaggregated by um, region and by characteristics of human rights defenders and by type of type of threat? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Clark. Since um, we have uh, five, we will have five more minutes in the end of a session. I will use them, and now I will give the floor for two and a half minutes to Rapporteur Pedro Baca. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I know how important this hearing is for many of its participants. So first, I would like to uh, acknowledge that uh, the chain, a chain of protection uh, in Colombia is very sophisticated. It has saved many lives, but the legal investigations are still pending. Maybe um, something could be discussed to see if there are good practices from the um, public prosecution or the general attorney's office um, for those who need protection. And secondly, uh, this is for the protection authorities in the executive. This has to do with the lifting of protective measures. What's the criteria for the lifting of these measures? And will they all be part of the ongoing revisions? For example, what happens uh, when there's a weakening of the measures of people who might be at risk. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Rapporteur. And I will try to keep it brief and say, first of all, that I would like to acknowledge human rights defenders in Colombia and the organizations that do that work facing high risk. And I think we should acknowledge that. Secondly, I think that the recommendations presented by the civil society are uh, very relevant, a differentiated approach, improving the investigations, an adequate approach in terms of differentiated effects, and also, I would like to highlight the answer of the state in terms of their willingness for dialogue. My question, in, and it has to do with method the methodology, is that I would like to know if it would be possible to establish a follow-up table on the proposal presented by the organizations so a periodic meeting could be held to discuss the proposals presented here so that the state can follow up and work on a methodology to uh, fulfill some improvements in the failures detected here. And my other question for the state was that there was a moment in the hearing where the civil society was talking about a reassessment of risk as a failure, as a flaw of the process because there was already an initial uh, assessment, but there should be a constant risk assessment. So I would like the state to um, see how to perform that risk reassessment they have mentioned. So I would like to know if it's um, the, the regular reassessment or if it's a new reassessment. Uh, that would be my question. Thank you very much. And uh, now, now we will, conclude uh, we will the close and and questions the, uh, by the commission. The questions and we will of give the, the floor and now for we will 10 move minutes on to the civil society. To giving so the floor for 10, stay, for 10 minutes final to comments. the civil society so they can present their comments. Thank you, Commissioner. My name is Alejandra Escobar. I am part of the CAJAR. And taking into account the remaining time, and in order to address this hearing, I would like to request the 
uh, Commission to use uh, additional minutes. Thank you. We would like to highlight that it's very important for the state to take into account the recommendations made by the civil society in this space. In that regard, taking into account the uh, dialogue they have referred to, we can establish the protocol of state action that has been proposed and the recommendations we have mentioned at the beginning. We are at your disposal in order to achieve these goals, implementation of precautionary measures. That's why we urge this state to provide a complete response regarding the um, protocol that has been proposed. And we request the commission to take account what uh, has been um, proposed and together with the UN office we that you can provide technical assistance also we urge the state to implement the um, recommendations made by the commission that involves making legal structural changes what has been proposed in this hearing by the civil society contributes different resources for these structural uh, modifications in order to determine the risk already assessed by the commission, it is very important that no, there are no new requirements asked by the state. One of the main problems is that beyond the uh, number of meetings, when they are made, there are shortcomings in the adoption of commitments and specific measures, such as the follow-up of the commitments that have been made. We hope that the qualitative analysis we have made on the follow-up uh, spaces provides clarity not only about issues, but also regarding the improvement opportunities in that regard. I will now give the floor to Ostella. Good afternoon to everyone. First of all, we would like to thank the report that has been presented by Mr. Ambassador regarding the measures and meetings. And of course, we welcome their openness to dialogue. However, in order to fulfill the goal of this hearing, which is to achieve better me measures for the implementation of precautionary measures, I should express on behalf of human rights behave, uh, defenders and the community of beneficiaries that the report presented by the ambassador is not enough. We consider it to be insufficient as it is only a report that indicates the number of meetings that were held without indicating the results. And we have to say that during the current government, none of the organizations pre present had had a follow-up meetings regarding the measures. This report, Mr. Ambassador, we have to say it is a report that corresponds to the number of meetings, but does not state the result. This has been, there have been formal meetings that did not make any progress regarding precautionary measures. The figures presented by Mr. Ambassador regarding the number of reports that have been presented before the commission, this isn't efficient for precautionary measures. These reports indicated requests to the commission for the lifting of precautionary measures. These reports are also limited to establishing a relation of open interrogatories regarding threats and other attacks to defenders without indicating methodologies or results. These reports are full of um, material protection measures without following the criteria my colleagues have presented that would provide a more efficient protection. Thus, Mr. Ambassador, we believe it's not enough and we insist on having a protocol to follow up in an efficient manner the quality of the meeting, the, what is the goal of these follow-up meetings, 
why it is important for authorities to participate in these uh, meetings, authorities that have the capacity to solve the situation affecting defenders. In that regard, we would like to insist on the fact that the report is not enough, that the report, in fact, we respectfully say, does not contribute on a, a, to the goal of our of this hearing. We hope that in the meeting we have regarding the protocol, we can also make reference to the content and quality of those uh, follow-up and implementation meetings, and especially that we can review what are the measures for the protection and prevention. We hope that with the support of the commission, we can guarantee that human rights defenders and those that are part of most vulnerable communities. Thank you, I'll give the floor to my colleague. Thank you, Luz Estela. I would like to greet everyone present. As we do not have much time, I would like to react on three things. Firstly, the uh, general consideration regarding protection in terms of the state's duty according to international standards. Secondly, some elements regarding the functioning of the UNP, which uh, I consider to be important, taking into account what my colleagues have already mentioned. Thirdly, what has been said by the Attorney General's Office about threats. Regarding protection, one of the main problems is the limited vision that protection has. We are not we try to provide a response to the duty, international duty, to a comprehensive, integral protection. And there are many devices that are institutionalized that are part of the Colombian state in order to look for that domestic protection, integral protection, which are not being applied. There is no articulation or collaboration and then there is a limited vision. Uh, it depends on what the UNP does. That is one element that we should bear in mind. There's a limited vision of protection as a duty of the Colombian state. The second element as the, represent, the assistant representative mentioned, there's a pending issue without, within the UNP. The Inter-American Commission has even made this recommendation several times. The model implemented by UNP is collapsed. collapsed. It's not working. According to what my colleagues pointed out before, it is untimely, it is inefficient, it is not appropriate. We need to redesign the UNP so that within the framework of its duty can provide protection as it has been determined. When requesting this hearing, the national state um, established an emergency plan to adopt measures for the prevention and protection of human rights defenders and social leaders. In that emergency plan, there are already certain elements that have to be changed within the legal framework of the UNP. That is a duty a state has to comply with. So I would like to highlight that because apart from redesigning the UNP, there are measures that the state 
included in that plan and have to be eliminated. In particular, the measures adopted last year, and it has been expressed in a hearing before the Constitutional Court are considered to be regressive. Having said that about the UNP, in connection to what the delegate of the Attorney General's Office regarding the response of the investigation office in terms of threats, I could like to highlight that although it is true in 2021, the capacity of the prosecutor was strengthened to investigate threats in these cases is amazing. And this is one of the most recurrent aggressions against human rights defenders that progressively in the last years, it has increased. There is a data provided by the Attorney General's Office itself through the programa Somos Defensores of a unit of 5,550 cases that the office has from 2018 to April 2022 only. We have only two sentences and seven cases are being heard. So the efforts to strengthen this are okay, but we cannot see the results. Impunity is alarming. This is one of the aggressions increasing every day. Thank you. Thank you. We have allowed you to take more time. So now we will give the floor to the state for 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, before giving the floor to the Attorney General's Office to conclude its presentation, I would like to say that it's a great pleasure to listen to the proposals made by the commissioners and the ones made by the civil society. We have taken down notes the role of the beneficiaries of the organizations to participate in these projects. We are going to link this as Commissioner Clark has requested and we will try to map the uh, places where risk is higher. I am sure that we are going to develop a protocol for the protection with the beneficiaries but also knowing Dr. Augusto Rodrigo, who is in charge of UNP, who is an expert in human rights, I'm sure that now we won't have uh, studies carried out twice, that the evaluation made by the Commission is going to be respected by UNP. And we are committed to participate in meetings with petitioners and we will work closely with the analysis made by CEREM. And we welcome a follow-up table and frequency of the meetings will be presented before the commission. Without further ado, I will now give the floor to the Attorney General's office. Thank you, commissioners and representatives of the organizations. Dr. Dr. Lourdes, Dr. Pedro, the participation of the Attorney General Office is to present the best practices that we have implemented for the development of the strategy to investigate threats to social leaders and human rights defenders. Practices that correspond to the duties to investigate threats. And as I have pointed out, these best practices led us to keep a constant communication with the victims of the threats. As I have said, we have two channels that work 
24-7 in order to deal with threats so that we can act urgently and in order to preserve the evidence. Those best practices and immediate attention to the victims has allowed us to be communicated with the UMP directly so that when the threat is made, we can inform the UMP so that they can adopt the corresponding protection measures. Also, Dr. Lourdes, among the work we're doing, and I am thankful for the recognition of the work carried out by the office, we are supporting the 35 directorates through a process that is aimed at working regionally so that what we are doing at the central level can also be implemented in the different sections. It is important for you to know that when investigating threats, our group has analysts that review the elements the features related to each victim, the territory where they live, in order to carry out the investigation with that differentiated approach we have mentioned in this hearing. I would like to say that the work made, taking into account the implementation of best practices, the Attorney General's office has better results. I can say, Lourdes, that now we have 11 um, six, casos, sentences. six cases have been solved through the principle of opportunities through an agreement between the parties. We were able to determine the person responsible for the threat. And that person, let's say, made an agreement with the victim, the person being threatened, and the process concluded. We have 55 cases that have already uh, perpetrators that have been charged and different um, orders for the detention of the persons accused of making the threats. This work has been carried out with social leaders and defenders, but also with journalists, as you well know. Finally, I could like to say that in this group and personally, we have been open to dealing with the requests made by human rights defenders and social leaders. And we have also, we have always held meetings that have been requested. We will continue working and I would like to express the victims' representatives that they have the possibility, the right to be in touch directly with the prosecutor working on your cases. Thank you. Thank you, Laura Martinez from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I would like to highlight the proactive role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Honorable Commission has been a witness of that. And as an internal group, as the ministry, we are available 24 seven for the petitioners throughout the years. This is translated to more of 150 meetings lasting from two to three hours, others up to six hours. So this is not a figure. This is the work we may when there are threats or risks we try to respond in the better possible way before these risks we know that this is our responsibility these are serious situations and an irreparable harm may occur it's important to highlight that because the mechanism deals with both elements or structural changes that the government has implemented and they are timely mechanisms it is important to highlight that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has convened different monitoring meetings, bilateral meetings with the petitioners present here today since August the 7th. The organization Cajar, we had a meeting with them, and we also had meetings 
with other organizations to discuss measures affecting them and other um, measures as well. For example, with the members of the Commission Intersect as the Commission has highlighted in several spaces, we highlight the principle of complementarity of the system. In that regard, it is important to us to express that domestic um, processes are not a web, but we are following a norm and technical evaluations. This is not part of a wimp of the institution, but these are mechanisms that allow us to identify the risk and assess this risk. And based on this, take timely and adequate decisions in order to implement the corresponding measures. Thus, once we receive the notification of the precautionary measure, we activate the necessary channels, institutional measures, bilateral meetings, and we always express it is very important to start a protection path. Once this path is open, the principle of consent is key for this protection process to be started. We have to follow all legal procedures in order to provide the necessary protection measures. It is very important for the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs to be available 24-7. Now we will now give the floor to the UMP. Thank you. I could like to say that we are making adjustments within the legal framework. We are studying the technical difficulties and that's why we have started a process of normative modifications that have to do. Thank you. Thank you to the estate. I'm sorry, but we have run out of time. You can send your comments in written. I could like to hear to thank Everyone, we have another hearing afterwards. That's why we have to conclude and adjourn this hearing. I'd like to thank the civil society, the UN representative, the state for your valuable information. We will follow up through the country reporter and the monitoring system. Thank you, and I adjourn this hearing. Un abrazo evaluadora. Un abrazo, comisionada. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Montserrat. Gracias a todos los comisionados. Embajador, un placer. Un placer haberlos visto de nuevo. It's a pleasure.